So during the filming of this video that you're about to watch, there were a few technical issues with the audio. So please accept my apologies and I really hope you're still able to enjoy it. So it's not every day that you get to spend a little bit of time with an Olympic athlete and a medal winning one at that. Behind me, you can see Kelly Sutherton, yeah, former yeah, heptathlete, yeah. competed in multiple Olympics and won multiple medals. We're gonna follow Kelly on her golfing journey with her coach, Phil. We're gonna track her over the next few months and see how she gets on, how she progresses. And I really think there's gonna be some information in these videos which can help you and your game. Kelly. Thanks for coming onto my channel and uh, exposing your golf swing to all the people watching. Um, just before we get started and, and kind of go into what you've worked on, just give the viewers a little bit of a background as to your sporting history. So I come from athletics, track and field, and I come from a multi-event background, so heptathlon, so it's running, jumping, throwing, yep. hurdles. So I um, went to two Olympic Games, um, won three Olympic medals. Relay, and you didn't bring them today. No, I was so disappointed. I thought you were going to be wearing them today, but next time you can bring next them. Next time we will. I'll see if that makes a difference when I get a club. Perfect. So obviously, you know, a history of being an elite athlete, that's surely going to help as we as we come into golf. So you've been playing golf for, well, not even a year. Yeah, so I started probably at the end of September last year. So, and I've had a lot of lessons, just not enough playing. Yeah, yeah. Before. So you're about eight, eight to nine months in. And, and kind of what made you... What, what pulled you into golf? What was the kind of thing that appealed to you about golf? Because everyone was able to play it through lockdown most yeah. of the time because obviously socially distant. And I, I needed a new challenge. I, I'm not somebody who wants to go out for a run. It's not what I enjoy, even though I did it for a career. <laughs> I just wanted a new challenge that was technical. I love being coached. I'm still a coach. So I just wanted a, just a new challenge actually that would take me to the rest for the end of my life. That sounds a bit depressing, but I know I've probably got another 40 years yeah, of being yeah. able to learn this game. Well, we're going to follow your kind of journey over the next few weeks and months, and we're going to sort of track how you're getting on, because I think it's going to be really interesting for, um, you know, anybody watching this who's new to the game, or even if someone's out there who's been, you know, playing 15 years, but just wants to brush up on a few, a few of the kind of basics and fundamentals that are going to help them. So what we're going to do is we're going to kind of start off with your kind of first couple of lessons. I'm going to bring in your coach, Phil, kind of see what he did with you. Um, and run us through the process that we went through. Okay? Yeah. Let's get started. Right, so Phil, you've got this immense athlete. Comes to see you, what's the goal? What's the kind of first thing you did and, and kind of what were your first challenges when you saw Kelly? Uh, I guess with Kelly when she walked in, um, the first thing I noticed was her posture. Uh, Kelly obviously throughout her whole life played lots of different sports and the up league, so she has to go to lots of different postures. But it was very important to get Kelly into an athletic posture. Because she was, at first, you'll see a video later, but first she was just swinging arms. So we, we worked on that dynamic posture. So Kelly, if you stand to the ball like you stood to the ball when you came in to the studio. But Kelly, did you even... Did you even know what good posture was like? Did you have a kind of image of a golfer or did you, you come into golf kind of really blind as to I don't even know what it should look like or? To be honest, I, all, I came in thinking I already like Tiger Woods. <laughs> <laughs> so I already thought, I was like, I've watched enough golf, this is how it goes. But obviously how, what I felt and what was actually happening wasn't the same okay. thing. So yeah. my feelings were completely skewed. So if you don't look like Tiger Woods, is that because Phil's <laughs> messed you up and kind of... <laughs> Probably. <Yeah. laughs> More like. so, so, Kind of what, did, what did you do then, Phil? What was the first thing you did with posture? So I, I guess the first one was Kelly came in uh, very upright, straight legs, pelvis tucked right underneath her, so her belt buckle was more or less pointing to the sky. I mean, yeah. that sounds quite exaggerated, but it definitely was. So we got her widen her stance a little bit, see it on her belt buckle more to the floor, and leaning more from the hips. So great, great angle. Now we worked on, in terms of posture we then worked on where Kelly's hands were in relation to her setup yeah so a good drill for Kelly was if you let go of the club Kelly so just let your arms hang make a clap that is where you want the club to be Kelly was very much tucked in here really difficult to swing around and rotate so we got her a little bit further away from the ball okay and Kelly when, when Phil changed your posture did you feel instantly better and the shots were better because there'd be a lot of people watching this thinking you know, when I change posture and setup, it just feels terrible and it actually gets worse. Did you see that or did you get better as a result? Immediately when I, I hit the ball better, it felt easier yeah. um, and I could follow through easier. So everything, the whole movement 
start to finish was easier just because I just had a better setup. Yeah. So I think it probably stems a little bit from your background and being used to putting your body in different positions and actually it's probably something you're quite comfortable with. But I think, you know, from, from your point of view as a coach, you know, we're trying to generate some speed, aren't we? Really hard to do that from a from a poor stance, poor yeah. posture. So you might have had some success and hit some good shots, but I guess you as a coach, you're looking at more the long term and say, we need to fix this now to really get the most out of it. I guess I wanted to give Kelly a posture that, that complemented her swing. Yeah. She, she swings it great, she swung it great from the, from the start. Um, I just didn't want her to do any damage to her body. So yeah. we've got to be in this dynamic athletic posture to help us rotate properly. Yeah. Whereas if Kelly stayed in the position, I think she probably would have done more harm than good. Yeah. And if I can give context, I've got three prolapse discs and a fracture in my thoracic spine. So if anybody's injured, <laughs> then it's the worst walk to take from the start. <laughs> so, so I have to have the right posture yeah. to protect myself. Yeah, okay. Let's see you hit one. Smash it. Are you still conscious of that posture or do you feel it's quite natural for you to go into that position? I'm quite now? natural, I don't think about it now. Okay, good. But you now picked I'll... it up first time pretty much. So I told Kelly to go into position, bang, she was in position. Yeah. And we haven't really looked back since. Yeah, there you go. That's my natural. That was better though. That yeah. strike, yeah. Do you want your kind of points to kind of work kind of a little bit more knee flex? Yeah. Hips, pelvis angle? Yeah. And then giving her some down. distance on the ball. Check points. Yeah. Yes. I think, you know, you're obviously working with Kelly and he's doing, doing a great job. I think it's important as a coach, and we can do this kind of through this video, rather than just moving someone and putting them in a position, you kind of have to give them a few checkpoints too, that they can go ahead and, yeah. because it's great to look at your posture and lesson goes perfect, but it might not be in too much time. And I think golfers need to have these little checkpoints, you know, say so the one there perfect of kind of just letting your arms and, and clap is great for distance to the ball, but because it, it's, I've had it with lessons when they come in and, you know, you look at their setup and they say, well, I'm just fine because I had a lesson six months ago and they say it's fine. Yeah. Like, well, it, it might not be now. <laughs> you know, it's kind of that kind of thing. So all these little checkpoints that you're going to have, and it's, it's a lot, isn't it, early on to try and remember all. Yeah, it all is. And I think one thing I do is when I'm at home in front of a mirror, um, I oddly walk past it, sometimes stop and have a look and do it but also at the range if there's a mirror behind the range before you start I check and I look I'm not going to look at myself but I'm looking to make sure I'm in the right position and I feel myself so I always check that to yeah, make yeah. sure that's right yeah. um, I suppose that's just the athlete in me and the coach you need to make sure I'm doing it right. right Phil what did you do next? so uh, we came out here obviously on the grass and we really worked hard on strike and what it, what good strike looks like and what bad strike looks like. At the beginning, I didn't. Really, I just thought you just hit the ball. I didn't know you hit yeah. the ground at all. And I, I think I just don't want to muddy my clubs. <laughs> but so that's so that's that's like the thing. You know, most golfers who start, they don't realise that you've got to hit the ground. They're almost they're trying to miss yeah. the ground, aren't they? They're trying to protect it. Like it looks great. Yeah, the yeah. Golf course looks great. Yeah. I don't want to hit the floor because I don't want to make a mess. I want you to make a mess in yes. the right place. But will you will you know that when you hit the ground, you hit better shots? Yeah, absolutely. It goes, it, even if you don't have all the full power, it, it goes straight, it goes where you want it to go. Yeah. Um, and I think a lot of it is I'm scared of breaking my club a yeah. little bit and damaging the surface. Yeah, yeah. I think so. It's just it's it's a, it is a mental block and everyone yeah. struggles with it, right? Yeah. What I found interesting as well, which I really like, is that you were saying to me just off camera when you did some strike work with Kelly, you kind of went to a shorter club. Yeah. Which I think is. You know, because you're looking to learn a movement, you don't need to make it harder. So yeah. go to a shorter club, and I think that's a great message that you know anyone looking to make changes or improve their swing, you can probably advocate it. Just go to an easier club, and then you can build back up. But using a shorter club, at least you're kind of going to get better form, and you're going to start doing it more accurately. Aren't you? And also, like you told me to be shorter, don't have to be at the top of the club either. You can be here because yeah. it's actually easier. Yeah. So, um, so that's that's one thing that's helped. You don't have to use the whole club length. You can actually. Shorten so if you set up that ball, oh, sorry Phil, so what have you told Kelly to focus on now? So we're focusing on shorter, because Kelly has ample speed, right? Yeah. So when the speed's never going to be an issue, we're never looking to slow Kelly down. But what we're looking to do is we're looking to do a smaller motion to actually make sure the contact is better. So Kelly here is focusing more on hitting ball first and then grab, really concentrating on hitting down into the ball yeah. rather than lifting, scooping yeah. up. Which again, with her high loft, is quite hard to do. Yeah, yeah. You see the loft, yeah, yeah. you try and scoop it.
Any ground contact? No. Okay. <laughs> but the ball went straight. Through. The ball went straight. That's the main thing. <laughs> Ground contact. It was there, it was there. Exactly. Was that before or after the ball? Before. Before. So I don't know about you for you coach, but when I see people do that, they'll often go, oh, yeah, I think, I'll be like, that's the right. There was yeah. the right amount of contact. It was just before. not and, quite and when right. when we were hitting position. shots before, you were hitting the ground before the ball, but the shot was actually better than what you were hitting when you weren't yes. hitting any of the floor. Absolutely. Got to hit the floor. Better. Much better. And I just hit the floor. I just hit it. So I think this is interesting because, you know, if you want to play, you obviously want to be as good as you can. I call, I would call this a non-negotiable. Absolutely. You kind of have to do this. There is no one out there playing good golf who is scooping the ball. It just doesn't happen. You will see every now and then the odd weird and wonderful grip and stuff, but good players all do this. It's kind of a, it's almost like a key skill that, that you've kind of helped Kelly with early on. I think that's really important for your you know, development. I think it's just getting over. I can make a mess yeah, on the yeah. floor as long as you patch it up. Absolutely. So yeah, that's okay. That's not. That's that's expected. Yeah. I mean, Phil has to stay around for an hour afterwards. <laughs> we sort of put it all back. But, but, okay. <laughs> but one more. Then you got another ball. Yeah. Yeah. Good. Just brushed it. You brushed the floor, yeah. Yeah. I, I, you can see. Yeah. You can see. I've brushed it, but not. Not as much as you would do. Yeah. It's gone well. Oh, that was good. Oh, that was really great. Yeah. That was great. So you're you're early into golf. But based on your background and what you've done, obviously incredible athlete in the past, what can you what can you sort of speak about golfing? Is it what you thought it was gonna be? Is it hard or easier? Is it more challenging? What are your kind of thoughts at this stage? I mean, coming from seven events, technically learning seven events is, is hard. Yeah. So I kind of use that kind of mentality to learn golf because obviously you've got a bag full of clubs that basically is about fifty different events in there, isn't there? It's a great way of looking at it. So it is like a multi-event full of clubs. Yeah. So it's learning what each club does at that, that right moment. Yeah. So that's a challenge for me, learning how that does. And I expect that I'm going to take a couple of years to learn how that is. Um, yeah. But I thought I'd be more frustrated. I swear quite a lot <laughs> under my breath. I haven't done today. Well, I have often done more. <laughs> um, but the, the crucial thing is that I know I'm here to learn and I'm okay about making mistakes. Yeah. So I know this is, a, this is a lifelong journey of learning and I think you can probably say that any golf pro or coach never knows everything you're always learning yeah, yeah. so um, I feel quite relaxed when I come here so it's something that I know that I've got now for the rest of my life yeah I wish I started it earlier yeah, yeah. well I think I think I was talking to Phil just off camera I think you know if we looked at someone who was as new as you are to the game you're ahead of where we expect you to be Definitely. and that's and I think that's really really important because once you've hit one good shot and you know what it feels like. Yeah. You kind of want to do that all the time, but even though you're not, you're still way ahead of kind of where you should be. And I think what's really interesting with Phil is I think he's really done this really well in that, you know, we're going to do some stuff on the course, but he's taken you on the course. He's done lots of different clubs with you. And I think anyone out there who's, who's learning the game, and I hear this a lot, people say things like, I want to learn to play golf, so I'm going to take a year of lessons to get it right. And I'm like, oh, get on the course yeah. and yeah. figure out how to hit from grass and slopes yeah. and different types of grass and that's kind of what you're doing really. It feels a little bit more possible not trying to put things in your mouth, but it feels like it's a lot to take on, yeah. but it does help you in the long run. Yeah, so we've done the right thing by getting, uh, luckily had some lessons, some fundamentals, have my clubs fitted, so I'm well equipped and now it's just absolutely playing golf yeah. and making those mistakes and learning from them. I have played here and it took me, we played off the 10th didn't we, and right in the in the, on the mat in the warm up and then took 10 shots but by the time we got to the 18th I parred it basically oh, okay. so like I was learning the environment because yeah, yeah. um, I don't know the courses so my thing is you've just got to keep playing absolutely, absolutely. well I think you're on the right track to Phil and we're <laughs> going to follow your journey and we're going to see how you progress and we'll do a little bit when we get to the end of the series we'll do a little bit of a comparison as to where you were where you are uh, and I think you know what you've gone through and what Phil's gone through is bad to help a lot of people watching this, especially if you're newer to the game. But even experienced golfers, there's things here that they can kind of look back, you know, posture, set of grip, all those kind of things. And for me, that strike thing is so important. So, Kevin, thanks for your time. Thanks, Chris. And uh, we will pick your journey up in a few weeks' time and see where you are. And uh, with any luck, you've still got the same coach. <laughs> thanks, Phil. Appreciate thank your you time as well. And uh, thank you for watching.